Hey everyone, welcome back to Take You Forward. So, in the previous video, we did solve the LCS. We did learn about the memorization technique, the tabulation technique, and the space optimization technique. But what did we learn about, uh, learn over there? We will be given a couple of strings, and we did learn how to print the length of the longest common subsequence. Like the length over here is 3. So, we did learn how to print the length of the longest common subsequence, and we got it as. Three. Now, what if I change the question? Like, the question might ask you, okay, it's fine. You're giving me the length. What if I want the string? Yes, what if I want the string? Like over here, the longest common subsequence is nothing but if I carefully see, I, I will have a B, I will have a B, I will have a D, I'll have a D, I'll have an E. So I can say the string is B, D, E. This is the LCS. What if someone comes up and says, hey, can you please print me? the LCS, can you do this? You can do it via brute force. But can you do it in an optimized way? Mm, I think we can. So in order to do this, what I will do is, I'll go back to uh, the summation that we did. So if you remember well enough, uh, we did a summation, uh, no, not this one, the tabulation summation. Let's copy paste the tabulation summation. So this was the summation that we did, okay? Now, Let's take couple, uh, let's take the example A, B, C, D, E and B, D, G, E, K, okay? And let's do one thing. Let's simply uh, print the DP array, okay? Let's uh, 0, J less than equal to M and J plus plus. I can be like C out of DP of I, J, okay? And this is something and we can go as C out of N, L. Perfect. So let's quickly uh, print the DP array and let's see what is the DP array coming across. So this is what uh, the DP array looks like and this is the answer 3. So let's uh, write this in our uh, iPad and then I'll be explaining you. Okay, so this is how the DP array looks like. We did print it and we know this is uh, the I, like this, these are the row numbers and the column numbers go over here. And if you remember while doing the tabulation, we converted this into a one based indexing. You must be remembering. That's why if I write down the indexes, this is the 0th index, 1st index, 2nd index, 3rd index, 4th index, 5th index. This is a 0, this is the 1st, this is the 2nd, this is the 3rd, this is the 4th, this is the 5th. And if you take the string S1 equal to A, B, C, D, E and S2 equal to B, D, G, E, K. So, this is a string of length 5 but if I write down the indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But the answer is stored over here like if you carefully see the answer is stored over here in a 5 and a 5 okay so basically i can say a b c d e this is the ith guy and then you can say b d like or you can just write it over here b d g e k because you're doing one based indexing so this is why only this portion of the dp matters and these guys do not have any value okay so what does this 3 signify where is this stored at 5 and 5 Let's uh, write the meaning of DP of 5 and 5. What is the string? E, B, C, D, E. B, D, B, D, G, E, K. A length 5 means entire string. Means entire string. E, B, C, D, E. A length 5 means entire string. So, B, D, G, E, K. In both the... End both the strings, what's the longest length 3? That is what is stored here. Okay, so in order to understand this, let's take this 2. Where is this stored? Stored at the index 4 and stored at the index 2. So at 4 and 2, this is stored. So let's write dp of 4, 2. So it's saying take a length of 4 string. So that means a, b, c, d. a, b, c, d. Take a length 2 string, which means BD. Let's take BD. So, in this, what is the length of the LCS? That's 2. If you carefully observe, we have a B, we have a D, and we have BD. The length of the longest common subsequence is 2. Thereby, the DP array stores a 2 over here. Similarly, if I say, why is the 1 stored over here? Because in this BD, why is the 1 stored over here? Because in this BDGE and in this ABC, there is only one thing common, that's B. Thereby, 1 is stored over here. But that's the meaning of DPs. Okay, so how do you compute the answer? That's that's a big question. So if I ask you, how is the tabulation looking? 
So if I ask you, what are the formulas that you wrote? You wrote a simple formula, dp of ij is equal to 1 plus dp of i minus 1 and j minus 1. And this did happen when, when these guys were equal, like s of i minus 1 was equal to equal to like s of 2, j minus 1. This is when you wrote this, remember? This is the first condition that you wrote. Or else what did you write? Or else you wrote, very simple condition, dp of ij was max of dp of i minus 1 j, that means previous row, same column, and dp of i comma j minus 1, same row, previous uh, column. This is what you wrote. Either the upper one or the down, either this one or either this one is what you wrote. So if I ask you a very, very straightforward question, over here we have a 3, right? And we have a E and we have a K. Do the match. I say no. So basically when the tabulation will go across, like I'll show you in the code, basically what happens is there's an I and there's a J. So they will be running. So whenever they will be at this stage, from where does this 3 come? Whenever you're at this portion and you're trying to fill up DP of 5 and 5, DP of 5 and 5 and you're trying to fill this up. Does K and E match? No. K and E do not match. So if they do not match, where does this 3 come in from? This line. Either the maximum of the previous row column or the previous guy. So basically, either the maximum of previous row, this is i, comma j minus, uh, sorry, this is i minus 1, comma j and this is i, comma j minus 1. Either of these guys maximum comes and gets stored over here. Thereby, this 3 did come from here 3. So what you'll do is, you'll say, okay, fine. We came from here. So you will go over here. You will straightforward go over there, right? You start from this last guy, which is n cross m. And then you start moving, start moving the pointer. So right over here, you're here. Okay, now, this is an E. This is an E, which means they are a match. They are a match. And if they are a match, where will this 3 come in from? Where will this 3 come in from? This 3 will come from 1 plus something on i minus 1 and j minus 1. What is i minus 1 and j minus 1? That's nothing but this guy. i minus 1 and j minus 1 is nothing but this guy. So basically what you did was, you took the value from here, you added a plus 1 and you wrote it over here. So now what will happen is, you will go over here. But remember this, before going over here, since this E matches to you, your E, you just store that as an answer. You store that as an answer. So you know that the length was 3 of the LCS. So remember, create an array or a string of length 3 and store E in the last index. Perfect. Now you're at 2. Does this D and does this, uh, does this D and does this G match? The answer to that is no. They do not match. So again, where will this 2 come from? The max of this or the max of this. So you go to the max. Perfect. Remember, whenever you go to the max, there is no need of taking any string. Perfect. Here's a D. Here's a D. Here's a D. They match. So if they match, where will this 2 come in from? This 1 plus 2. Perfect. Take this 1. So this came in from here. So before moving to this 1, a D is common. You just fill that D in. Perfect. Now you're at 1. Does this C and does this B match? No. So if they do not match, where will this 1 come from? Either the max of this or either the max of this. So what you do is you go to the max. So just go to the max. Perfect. Now, you add here. This B and this B matches. If this B and this B matches, what can I say? They are matching. Thereby I can take this. And if they are matching, where will this one come from? From the diagonal because it's I minus 1. Thereby you will go here. Remember this. This was the string B, D, G, E, K. You exhausted. The J is now standing at the 0th index. You exhausted. There is no more length of the second string remaining. So it's over. No need to do anything. Remember, 
if the string gets exhausted either of this string or either of this string you will stop if the string gets exhausted at any moment you are right away going to stop without traveling so what did you see you moved you moved and whenever there was a diagonal movement you took the strings and you put that into the length 3 string that you were looking for right so can i say in order to write the code it's it's going to be super simple and super straightforward i know one thing for sure i will initially have my pointers at n and j equal to m that's for sure because initially we will be starting over here and then we will decide whether we move to the max or whether we move to the diagonal right so i know one thing i will keep on doing till it gets exhausted so if this is greater than zero that means i have some length of string r like first string some length of string too so let's go on let's go on doing now what was this thing that we were checking we were like okay we are at i and j let's go back to the table initially what did you check you checked is this e equivalent to this k so just go and check remember zero based indexing so you'll be like okay if if s1 of i minus 1 is not is rather equal to equal to s2 of j minus 1 that means they're equal they're equal so as of now they're not equal so let's not think on this let's not think on this condition because they're not equal let's write the else condition what if they're not equal what if they're not equal then we have to figure out where did this 3 come in from because we always take max of the previous row or the previous column so let's see where this 3 comes in from either it will come from here or either it will come from here remember one thing it might come from any one of the places in that case you can move anywhere remember if there is a 3 over here and there is a 3 over here then you can move here or you can move here it's okay that means it might have multiple answers and you cannot print multiple answers using a dp table then you have to apply normal brute force so if there is a three both of the places you can move anywhere so you'll be like okay i know one thing for sure it it either either dp of i minus 1j that's the previous row would be greater than the previous column or it will be the other way because I know one thing for sure, this guy is either greater than this or this guy is either greater than this. Like anyone will be greater because I take max of both and whoever is the max, like over here 3 was the max, so I move. So how is this movement? If this guy is greater, I move towards him. If this guy is greater, I move towards him. So let's see. I am saying this guy is greater. So I move towards I minus 1. So I'll be like, I please move towards I minus 1 or J move towards J minus 1. Like in this case, J will happen. In the in our case, J would have moved, right? So in this way, you can move the I pointers and the J pointers, correct? In the next, I pointers or J pointers? In the next step, you are over here. You saw this guy matching with this guy. Thereby, the matching case comes in. And whenever there is a matching case, remember this. Whenever there is a matching case, you have to, yes, you have to store in the string. So, you know, the answer was the length of the LCS was very simple. It was dp of n, comma m, right? So, probably you can create a string. You can create a string. S equal to, probably you can, as of now, keep it empty. And then, you know, the answer is i equal to 0 till length. So, s plus equal to, probably you can... Uh, just assign some uh, dummy dollar values. Assign a dummy, dummy array, dummy string of dollar, dollar, dollar assigned. Okay. And probably what you can do is you can keep an index equal to length minus one. Right. And if this is the case, then you can say, okay, in our string or in our LCS string, in index, I will store S1 of I minus one. And the next moment I'll shift the index so that why am i doing this so that remember whenever this e whenever this e and this e match i'll store e where there was the index 
Then I'll move the index to the previous so that for the next step it gets stored. Perfect. We have stored the index and we have moved the index back. What about i? i will move one step as well as j will move one step. Very important. Both of them will move. Why? Because, because they have to move to the diagonal. Diagonal. So thereby it will move to i minus 1 and j minus 1. So this is the entire set of code. If you write, you will be able to print the answer. So if you see in the code as well, I've written the exact same thing, taken the length, uh, assigned the answer and then index, so this exact the same thing. And if I uh, take other, both the strings and if I just run it, you will see that the string is getting printed. So that's how you can print the LCS. So the time complexity will be definitely n cross m. Uh, you have to use the tabulated, uh, like you have to use the entire 2D array so that you can backtrack. And you can simply backtrack and what will be the uh, time complexity to backtrack as about the time complexity the worst case can be n plus m assuming uh, in the matrix uh, you are backtracking something like this and then you move straight like you started from the right corner you move like this then you move like this so you take all the columns and all the rows so n plus m at the worst case is what you will backtrack so that's that's a simple uh, LCS stuff and before that n into m plus n plus m is what you will be requiring. So guys I hope you have understood the entire printing of LCS. Just in case you did please 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 make sure you like this video and if you're new to this channel please do consider subscribing to us because that is the only thing that keeps me going. And yeah with this let's wrap up this video and meet in the next one where we will be solving something new. Bye bye take care.